How's it going, Knicks fans? Welcome back to another episode of Fireside Knicks. I'm your host, Dylan Backer, and I'm joined by my brother and co-host, Justin Backer. And tonight, the New York Knicks three-game winning streak was snapped by the Boston Celtics, losing this one at the TD Garden by a score of 114-98. to Pretty much a back-and-forth game throughout, but the fourth quarter, they kind of just let it slip away. And we're going to talk about all those things about this game. So without further ado, I'm just going to pass it off to Justin. He's going to give us his game recap and some of his biggest takeaways. Yeah, as you said, the Knicks lost this one, 114-98. to The Celtics moved to 8-2. and two. The Knicks are now 5-5. Five and five. I mean, 5-5 five and five through the first 10 games. I don't think is the worst thing in the world considering the schedule that they've been handed. I mean, a lot of back-to-backs thrown in that schedule, this being the second part of a back-to-back they just played yesterday against the Charlotte Hornets. Um, yeah, I, I guess they kind of ran out of steam in the fourth quarter, man. Like you said, this is a back-and-forth game through three quarters. In the fourth quarter, Boston kind of just showed you know, that they are the better team right now, and they pulled away and made this really not even close. So you know, I think the Knicks kind of just ran out of steam in this one. They just played yesterday. Uh, grueling back-to-back on the road against one of the best teams in the NBA, if not the best team in the NBA. I mean, overall, I guess I'm not really that upset about this. Obviously, I don't want the Knicks to lose. I'm pretty upset that they lost, but I'm not going to harp on this one too much. I mean, the odds were kind of stacked against them. Zero days of rest on the road against arguably the best team in the NBA. They fought hard throughout this one, just couldn't pull it out. I mean, it's it's going to happen. They're not going to win every single game, so... You know, just some things I want to highlight. RJ Barrett did not play in this one. I guess he had a migraine or something. I don't know, a little a little strange. But so Josh Hart started in place of him. And, you know, Hart had a, a decent game, 16 points, nine rebounds, six for 12 from the field, three for six from three. But, you know, you really felt like that RJ's presence was missed in this one, you know, uh, especially down the stretch. In the fourth quarter, Josh Hart just had a weird fourth quarter, man. I mean, he had that one play where he – threw the ball off Drew Holiday's back and then picked it back up and made a three. That was really strange. And then everything that followed after that was just horrific. I mean, he was just hurting the Knicks after that from that point on. You know, I'm not going to sit here and harp on Josh Hart too much, but it's true. I mean, just the lack of spacing overall really hurt the Knicks in this one, especially because quickly had a really, really, really rough game in this one. Only seven points, one for 10 from the field. I mean, you knew he was due for an off night. He's been playing great to start the year. I mean, just it's going to happen. Um, hopefully it doesn't become a tr- trend, but it's going to happen. Uh, Jason Tatum for the Boston Celtics was just incredible in this one. The Knicks really had no answer for him, especially in the fourth quarter. He had 35 points in this one. I feel like he had half of those points in the fourth quarter. He had like 17 or 18 points of those in the fourth quarter. It was just absurd. And honestly, the Knicks defended him pretty well. He was just making really, really difficult shots. And, you know, it's just he's one of the best players on the planet for a reason, I guess. That's what he does. It's a superstar playing like a superstar. So, overall, you know, obviously the, the Knicks lost this one, but I'm not going to dwell on this one too much. I, I kind of expected this. This is a very tough draw, like I said, back-to-back, second part of a back-to-back on the road against one of the best teams in the NBA. I mean, this this wasn't going to be easy. Uh, One more thing I want to highlight, Julius Randle, another solid performance, 25 points nine rebounds five assists seven for 19 from the field i i think it's fair to say he's he's back more so to the last year's version of randall than what we saw the first two weeks because as this is four games in a row now that he's you know played at a pretty high level so i just wanted to give him his flowers right there you know uh jalen brunson 26 points 10 for 21 from the field three for seven from three Good game overall. All around, all around, this wasn't like a bad game for the Knicks, really. I mean, they were in this game until the very end. It's just the Boston Celtics did what the Boston Celtics do, and they pulled away. They're the better team than us right now. It's just, I'm just being transparent. The Celtics are a better team than the Knicks, you know? So they just did what they do, and they have a superstar in Jason Tatum who basically carried them to victory in the end and showed why he's one of the best players in the game. So all in all, not too upset about this one. Yeah, you know, first off, excellent takeaways as usual. I think you hit every point that needed to be touched on. You know, and, you know, I really wanted to say, too, they really did miss RJ Barrett in this one. Josh Hart played 43 minutes in this game. The Knicks essentially ran an eight-man rotation for this one. They didn't plug in anybody really from outside of the rotation. Like, they didn't have McBride play. They didn't have Fournier play. They just ran an eight-man rotation. So, Josh Hart basically had to play the entire game, and he did. And, like you said, while he did play solid, you know, his stat line will show that he played pretty solid. That fourth quarter was really, really frustrating, honestly. You know, I I don't think that he's necessarily the reason that we lost the game. I think Boston just ended up playing better than us, and that's why they lost. But that sequence, those couple plays in the fourth quarter after that that wicked three that he hit, 
just really, really killed any momentum we had because I believe after he hit that weird three, Brunson would follow up with a three, and then it was a three-point game, and then Hart had a bad foul on Tatum that became a four-point play, and then I believe he turned it over, and then he had a horrible missed shot underneath the rim, forcing a layup after that. So just a really rough sequence, and it's not like you could really take him out because they were already playing shorthanded. So it wasn't like you could really do anything about it. You just had to hope that that maybe the Knicks could go on a run late and kind of snatch it right back but they were unable to do that, you know, so it happens. I, like you said, I'm not dwelling too much on this loss. I kind of had a feeling it was going to be tough for them anyway, because one, it's against one of the best teams, if not the best team in the NBA. And it's on the back end of a back-to-back. The Knicks never seem to do very good on back-to-backs. They surprisingly played pretty well in this one, given that circumstance. But, you know, overall, I do wish that they would have pulled out the win, but it is what it is. I will say the Knicks did shoot well from three-point land. They went 15 of 35 from out there, which is 43%. So they continue to shoot threes well of late, which is a good sign. Quentin Grimes especially went four for six from three. So it was nice to see him knock down some shots. You do wish that the Knicks would have maybe, I don't know, defended a little bit better, but I don't think they defended bad. I think the Celtics are just a better team and they knocked down some shots. Maybe you wish they didn't have some tough fouls down the stretch or you know, playing a little bit too aggressive. Sometimes they weren't getting back on defense too and leaving some open transition threes. Those kind of things will kill you. It just proved to be it this time. I mean, I don't don't think, again, the 100% pinpoint, that is the sole reason why they lost the game. I think it's a culmination of things. I think the Celtics are also just, like like I've been saying, they're just a better team. You know, we've known this for a while. It's not like really a secret. The Celtics are a really good team. The Knicks are also a really good team, but sometimes you just, you can't beat them. Some, you can't really win all these games. Sucks that they lost this game, but hopefully that they can, you know, bounce back from this. Because like you like you alluded to in the opening, their schedule has been rough. Their schedule has been by far the hardest in the league. And the fact that they're 5-5 five and five through those first, two, first 10 games, I'm okay with it. Does this, is it necessarily something I'm, like, ecstatic over? No, of course not. I want the team to be a lot better than that. But I'll take it. Because I know the team can improve from here. It's still early in the season. You know, it's not panic mode or anything. They just rolled off a a three-game win streak prior to this loss. So things are in the right direction. And they did fight hard in this game despite being really shorthanded. Because, I mean, they were missing, quite frankly, their most consistent player this season in R.J. Barrett. They were missing him. It was showing that they were missing him tonight. You know, you, you had very little spacing, as you mentioned. Even though they shot well from three, you felt like in the fourth quarter they just couldn't get any good looks well whatsoever i don't know if boston's defense is just that good or if the Knicks' spacing issue is still an issue those are some things that i guess we'll just have to see you know down the road but overall i i don't really got much else to say about this game it is what it is it sucks that they lost but at this point i'm just looking forward to the next game and hopefully they can bounce back from that so without further ado i'm just going to pass it back off to you justin if you want anything else to add and kind of preview the next game they got yeah i really don't have anything else to add you know they lost it happens i'm not going to sit here and you know, say everyone needs to be traded, someone needs to be fired, this, that. They lost. It, it happens. It, they lost to a better team. They just basically need to put this one in the rearview mirror and look ahead to Wednesday against Atlanta. They should beat Atlanta on Wednesday. Um, I believe they already beat Atlanta once this season. I could be mistaken. Let me check that real quick. I believe they did. Yeah, they did. They beat Atlanta on October 27th. They beat them 126 to 120. Hopefully we don't give up 120 points to Atlanta again. But, you know, I, I think they're a better team than Atlanta. Like I've said thousands of times before, you know, the Knicks are a better team than insert team here. So they should beat Atlanta on Wednesday. I mean, I don't know. I feel like that'll be a good opportunity for them to bounce back, especially because after Atlanta, they face the Wizards and then the Hornets again. So, you know, that's two really easy ones after Atlanta. So hopefully we're talking about them being eight and five after these next three games and not five and eight eight so i don't know i don't really have anything else to add really i'm kind of just rambling at this point so i'm gonna pass the mic back off to you yeah no like you said there's not much to really comment on about this game about against the celtics you know it they lost they played well overall i, th- I didn't think the Knicks necessarily played bad i don't think they really dug themselves a hole i think the celtics just pulled away in the fourth quarter and they just you know they played better than them celtics are a better team we've known this like i said for a while so really it's just to look forward to the hawks game on wednesday they they really should beat them you know they they've kind of essentially owned them since that 2021 playoff series. The whole, you know, agenda that the Hawks own the Knicks or whatever should be swept under the rug or whatever at this point or thrown in the garbage because the Knicks are a way better team than the Hawks. And even though the Hawks are five and four right now, I still think the Knicks are a way better team than Atlanta. So overall, I just hope that they win that game on Wednesday. And like you said, you know, they got the Wizards and the Hornets after that. So they should they should really be able to roll off another three-game win streak. But then after that, it gets a little tougher because then they have the Timberwolves and then they go back home to face the Heat. So 
they got they got some tough games ahead of them, but they also have a kind of in their favor the next few the next week or so. So overall, I really just hope that they play well in that week, and we're talking some good basketball instead of some losing basketball. So, so without further ado, I guess I'm just gonna wrap this up. You know, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really appreciate you guys' support. You can make sure to check out the audio versions of this podcast as well. It's on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You can follow us on all of our social platforms. We're on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, this YouTube page. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe on this video. We'll see you guys in the next episode of Fireside Knicks. Peace out.